climbing. How do we get better? How do we become master climbers? In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some valuable tips and advice to help you improve your climbing and your overall fitness. So instead of dreading it when you see the elevation profile of your upcoming route or trembling when you see the road veering up, we want you to do the complete opposite. We want you to get excited and jump at the challenge. has to be said, climbing is one of the challenging aspects of our sport, but I truly believe that with the right training and techniques, you, yes you, can conquer any climb. From the short steep ones to the epics like Montezonclan or Alpe d'Huez. Now don't forget, if you enjoy these videos, if they help, hit that thumbs up button and let us know in the comment section below what you think. Right, it's time to get smashing and get into this video. Let's start off with one of the most important aspects to climbing. You guessed it, pacing. Now in order for us to get to the top of the climb in the best of our ability and do it in a time we are happy with, we need to think about how we are gonna pace that climb. And that could start right at the bottom of the climb or sometimes even well before we even get to the bottom. Now, before you reach the climb, you need to be thinking about the gradient and length of the climb. Now, the more familiar the climb is, the easier this is to do. But the key here is to start off nice and easy. What I mean by this is ride well within yourself. Now, the further you go up the climb, the more you can increase the effort. Now, what we're trying to do here is not end up in a hot, and sweaty mess on the side of the road. <sighs> now there are tools out there to help you pace this effort, like power meters or heart rate monitors. When you're on the climb, you wanna think about your body position. Now this can change depending on what kind of climb you're on. Now, for the most part, if you're riding on the longer, steadier climbs, you want to think about moving your weight backwards onto the back of the saddle. You want to try and engage your core and then relax your hands and your shoulders. Now, the reason for this is so that you can activate and engage all those big muscle groups. Now, we can't talk about body position when climbing without mentioning riding in or out of the saddle. Now, in my humble opinion, this is personal. Some riders prefer to spend more time out of the saddle than others. But there is one thing that is fact. Spending a long period of time out of the saddle is gonna burn more energy than when you're in the saddle. Now, as we increase the effort, you'll find yourself inching forward on the saddle in a more aggressive position. Now, this is good when you're putting out more power and more energy when climbing. Now, in my opinion, the most efficient way to climb is find a nice rhythm, and then every time you want to give your bum a rest, pop out the saddle, and then find a nice rhythm again. Now, on the flip side to that, if you do come to a short, steep climb, there is a potential to get out of the saddle and just power over it. Now, don't forget, it's much better to start the climb in a nice, easy gear than struggling and getting bogged down in a big, heavy gear. Now, what this does enables you to keep a nice, steady rhythm on the climb, and it's a much better climbing technique. It's also a lot more efficient. Now, as you approach the climb, you're gonna to wanna to anticipate the gradient ahead and shift into a nice, easy gear. Now, what this does is prevent you from getting stuck in a big gear and allows you to spin up nice and comfortably, maintaining a nice rhythm throughout the climb. Now it's crucial you maintain a good rhythm. Now to help you with that, you wanna focus 
on your cadence. Now, I like to sit at a cadence between 85 and 95 RPM. But the key here is to find a comfortable cadence for you, one that you can maintain and one that doesn't burn your energy too quickly. You want to find a nice consistent effort the whole way up your climb. Now here in the UK, we don't have those epic long climbs you may have seen on TV, but there are a few techniques that you want to take particular care over. Firstly, pacing. It's even more imperative on the longer climbs to make sure you pace your effort. Now tools, like I said, heart rate and a power meter will really help you on those climbs from 30 to 40 to maybe even an hour long. You also want to adapt to the gradient. So change gear as and when you need to. Don't get bogged down and stick in one gear. That is not gonna help you. Another factor might be nutrition. Now, when it comes to those shorter, steeper climbs, a few sips of energy drink might just be able to get you to the top. But for those longer climbs, those longer efforts, you wanna maintain and replenish those energy levels. Now, it can be really difficult to have a sip from your bottle, eat a bar when you're riding at 20%. So make use of those plateaus on the climb. And remember, on those longer climbs, mixing up your position, is key, it keeps you nice and comfortable and efficient, especially when you get to those steeper gradients. Popping out the saddle is definitely gonna help. Now, here we go. <sighs> Don't forget, what goes up must go down. The beauty of climbing. Now, if you enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one. Now, I'm going to enjoy a beautiful descent. Ah, yeah!